All right, just chugging along. Podcast 3.4, the naming of the acids and bases. And the first thing that's important is that all acids and bases are ionic compounds. So we will be following our ionic naming rules. Okay, oh, I wrote it right there. They follow the same rules for naming. Um, but in order to do the acids and the bases, you have to have your polyatomic ions memorized. And I will show you why at the end of this, well, kind of in the middle of this podcast, because it changes the naming schema. It changes how the naming works. Um, so how do we recognize acids versus bases? Well, acids, all acids have H plus ions. Okay, and so you're going to see this general pattern forming as we're looking at different compounds, and bases are different, and you'll see that in, in just a minute. So when we're naming binary acids, okay, the rule for this is we do a hydro, H-Y-D-R-O, and then the anion name, look at this in red, actually, we'll do it this way. Sorry, thinking on the fly here. It is hydro... anion stem, so insert the name of the anion, and then the suffix IC, and then we add the word acid at the end of it. So a hydro something ic acid. So let's start with HCO. Okay, now if this were not an acid, this would just be hydrogen chloride, okay, from naming ionic compounds, but because it's an acid, we need to change the naming of it. So this is a hydro, and I'll change back to red. The anion is, the, and this is the chlorine. So this becomes chlor, and then the IC suffix, hydrochloric acid. Okay, so hydro, the anion stem is the chloric acid. HBr follows the same thing. Again, we have the hydrogen here. Notice, so this is this would be hydrogen bromide. Okay, again, bromine is the anion in this in this example. And if we were to name this as an acid, so if it's dissolved in solution, we would have hydro bromine or bromine is the anion stem. So brom and then the ic, hydrobromic acid. Okay, so binary compounds, when they're acids, are pretty simple. Hydro, take your anion stem, add an IC acid. So the IC is the suffix, okay? So binary again, and you're going to see these a lot. We'll use, well, we're going to start using them in class more. So if I mention like hydrofluoric acid, you should be able to write the chemical formula for that. Polyatomic ions follow a little bit different rules, but and uh, it has to do with the endings again. So if your polyatomic ion, if your ion ends in an ATE, so like nitrate or sulfate or chlorate, your acid, so this is the ion here, the acid suffix becomes IC. So eights become ix. Uh, on the other hand, though, we have we also have ites like nitrite or sulfite or phosphite uh, or chlorite or hypochlorite. Okay, these become an ous suffix us. So eights become ix, ites become us. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple examples. Again, notice we have hydrogen on every single one of these. That's how we know that they are acids and not bases. Um, and we also have to make sure we are electrically neutral. So this is a sulfate ion. So if I were to name this, just straight naming it as if it were um, a polyatomic ionic compound, this would be hydrogen sulfate. Okay, that A-T-E ending. But as an acid, all right, dissolved in water, this this sulfate here would follow our eight ion here. So this would just become sulfuric acid okay and this keeps the name of the anion or the polyatomic um, anion uh, so notice again our eight suffix become an ic suffix okay 
And if I were to write sulfuric acid, remember sulfate, SO4, is a two negative, and that's why it is H2SO4 and not just HSO4, so we have to be neutral. Um, naming this straight, HNO3, this is hydrogen nitrate. But as an acid, this becomes nitric. Okay, another eight going to an ick, nitric acid. On the other hand, NO2, this is nitrite. So if I were to name it again, hydrogen nitrite becomes nitrous acid. Okay, so the ite suffix becoming an OUS acidic suffix. Okay, so polyatomics, if you have to know your eights versus your ites, so you can name them ix versus uses, all right? And bases are a little bit easier. All bases have the hydroxide ion, OH minus, this is hydroxide. And we treat these exactly the same as polyatomics. Um, so this, uh, the cation always keeps its name, so this is called sodium hydroxide. Okay, nothing special about that. And then, <clears throat> same thing down here, so we have calcium hydroxide. And again, notice we have an OH2 there because calcium is a two plus ion. And so if I add in hydroxide, a one negative, do a flip and switch. Uh, we have a calcium single anion and then hydroxide. We need two negative one charges in order to give us an electrically neutral substance.